Hi, I'm Wade from Thoroughbred Diesel, and today we're going to be doing a buyer's guide on the 99 to 2003 Ford Super Duty and Excursions with the 73 Power Stroke. So the 1999 to 2003 model years for the Ford Super Duties and Excursions was a very, very popular time for Ford's light duty diesel platforms. The 73 is one of the most revered motors in light duty diesel engine lore as one of the most dependable motors out there and they're right on that um, so what i'm going to do today is i'm going to talk through these uh, talk through these platforms and just give you our normal buyer's guide we're going to be talking about interior exterior uh, drive train uh, and engine so let's go ahead and just get started talking about model years on these so everybody knows um, you know your OBS trucks are your up to 1997 trucks and then the early 99 to, to, to the early 99 starts into your super duty platforms. So, but we want to concentrate on the 99 to 2003 uh, model years. Now the 99 to 2003 model years, as we said, contain the 7.3 liter power stroke. Now why this is significant as a buyer's guide to you all is because so many people right now are out looking for three to three quarter ton and ton trucks to add to their fleets at the house because maybe they picked up a camper or a bass boat or your new farmer and you're wanting to pull a cattle trailer or something like that so you want to get into an affordable truck that's also a dependable truck this is definitely one of the one of the better options for you so um let's go ahead and, and talk on exterior i know while adam's getting the camera together uh, what we've got, the two trucks we've got for you, one of our sales guys and then our, our shop vehicle. You've seen this in a couple installation videos. This is a 2001 Ford Excursion. This is a 2000, I believe, F-250. This is a two-wheel drive rig that one of our sales guys um, has got. This is a, a good looking old straight truck. So, all right, so we're gonna start talking about the exterior on these trucks. These model years of the Super Duties really, really were exceptionally well done as far as the paint goes on the exterior of the truck and preventing on preventing rust. Uh, most of these trucks, you just hardly ever see a, a rusty truck. You know, the normal stuff, maybe some cab corners or whatever, um, lack of previous owners taking care of it, you, you can see, uh, but you just don't see a lot of exterior rust on these, on these trucks. Now, there are different situations there you know far north trucks they get a lot of salt on the road you might see might see some rust on them if their owners haven't taken care of them but other than that pretty well good to go as far as that goes but that's not to say that they don't have rust issues and we'll talk about that in the body panels on the interior of these trucks and on all trucks if you're going to have a rust issue that's a good place to happen you can see that this truck right here the support rod for this bed panel it was rusted through then looking at the bed panel the bed panel itself on the interior side of it uh, is, is rusted pretty bad so that's something to be aware of is look for you know cab corners things like that rocker panels normal areas where you're gonna see rust make sure that you don't see it now I'll show you on this two-wheel drive truck two-wheel drive trucks had some clear coat issues uh, here so you can see some um, some peeling of the paint and on the hood i have seen that on vehicles on on quite a few other vehicles as well inside those areas seem to be problematic both of the hoods uh, sometimes are problematic about that but again that's that's part of uh, previous owners not taking as good a care of them as they can uh, you can see the the excursion has got a couple of spots on the roof of it but uh, nothing major so if you're not really worried about the exterior too awful much, you're getting a pretty good truck with this year. Uh, Super Duty's pretty well a, a, a turnkey package. Now, let's talk interior. Personally, I think that uh, you guys watch enough of our videos. You guys know I'm not a I'm not I'm not a Ford guy, so you Ford aficionados probably will beat me up on a couple of points on this thing. But I really think Ford trucks have the most comfortable seats out there I, I think anybody that's rode in a ford can probably attest to that uh, cloth seats they don't really have any problems with their cloth seats like you like you see in other models uh, this is this is a nice old straight truck as far as the interior goes so it's it, it's really 
they really don't have any problems you don't have any problems with the dash cracking or falling apart or no big uh, heater core problems or uh, for the blend door units inside the dash breaking down and not being able to uh, not being able to service you as far as your heating and air goes so they do really good there now let's show you the interior on the excursion the leather interior trucks this seat has been redone but Adam's going to be able to show you the passenger seat over there you can see the passenger seat over there hasn't been cared for very well and it's cracking pretty bad so that's a pretty common thing with the with the leathery interiors on these trucks uh interior on the excursion is is pretty well pretty straight i think you do a couple of different versions on the interiors on these uh the second row of seats on the excursions they actually uh you can get them with captain's chairs which are really really nice gives you good access to the third row set of seats back here uh good good amount of cargo room on these excursions as well um, the excursion with the 7.3 obviously is running from um, 2000 uh, to 2073 oh let's talk about a little bit of exterior there's some rust right there adam there's just a little bit of rust right there so something to watch for when you're when you're in your negotiating of your of your buying of your truck uh, really, really good family hauler on the excursions. The interiors on them are great. Uh, yeah, they're really, really nice vehicle. If any of you guys have got the 99 to 2003 Super Duty trucks with 73 Power Strokes, jump down in the comments. Tell us about what you like about your truck, what you don't like about your truck. Uh, you know, some of the failures that you've had, some of the bright spots of it. Jump down in the comments, tell us what you think about your truck. Let's talk about drivetrain. In drivetrain, we're gonna be grouping axles, frame uh, and transmission into it so drivetrain on the 7.3s another really uh, another bright spot we let's go over frame framework on these trucks you really not going to have to have you're not going to have to worry about um, uh, you know frames being weak or anything like that but one thing that i have noticed on the super duty trucks and it's really most i see it through really a lot of the year classes uh, is the surface rust on the frame so especially you northern guys if you're looking at a truck that came out of the north where it's been around a lot of salt you want to really look through the frame they seem to want where they want to flake with the rust as well i don't know what uh, chemically why that happens on these trucks but i just see a lot of surface rust on them now is it rusting through i don't ever see that but i do see quite a bit of surface rust on the framework on these trucks um, talk a little bit on suspension. Nothing jumps out here on suspension. This truck being a two-wheel drive has got the cool uh, springs in the front. Four-wheel drive is going to have the leaf springs in the front. Four-wheel drive rides fine. I mean, it's three-quarter ton truck. You're going to have a little bit of jolt and jar, but other than that, you know, it rides well. Again, lends itself back to Ford's having a good seat in them. That's a nice, that's a nice plus axles. The axles in the Super Duties in this year class are made by Ford. Now, this is where I may mis misspeak on this. I tried to study a little bit about this 10 and a half inch Ford rear end or, or, uh, or, or a, a Sterling as they call it. This is the 10 and a half and the three quarter ton and the ton trucks. Now, the front axles on the four wheel drives are the Dana 60s. The excursions from what I'm seeing have the Ford 10 and a quarter rear end in them. No real difference there. Uh, just a different classification on the rear end uh, as far as that goes. Takes the same same diff cover uh, and all that. I think there's a different spider gear set in it, but they are absolutely some of the most bulletproof rear ends that you can absolutely get in a truck. You never have, I, I think we've seen one truck when we were doing service work here in the shop that actually had uh, a, a tore up rear end, uh, ring and pinion out of it, and that was, that was a driver issue is what that was. Front end on the 60s, everybody knows about the Dana 60. The Dana 60 is pretty much famous, but you still have the same front end problems on a Dana 60 that you're gonna see inside of a Dodge truck. So you're gonna have ball joint issues, tie rod issues that you've gotta work through, and that's all part of your steering components, but we'll tie it all in here. So something to be aware of. Drivability issues because of that can be there for a truck that has high mileage on it and hasn't been taken care of. Now, transmission in these platforms you were able to get the 4r100 automatic or the zf6 the zf6 standard shift transmission well known 
pretty well bulletproof. There's not a whole lot that I can talk about on the ZF6s. Inside of the ZF6 transmission, um, that was different that Ford did, that Chevrolet did with their ZF6 and the Duramaxes. They actually had transmission cooler lines that um, that fed the uh, that fed the transmission. That did a really good job of helping to keep failures. The ZF's just a really really good transmission. Still have some clutch problems out of these trucks just because of, as we all know, um, you know, the, it just when you're when you're when you're working inside of performance and and, and these light duty diesel clutches um, definitely going to be you know they you will find the weak point in them pretty quick we offer aftermarket clutches for these trucks as well um, but the zf6 transmission you're really not going to have any problems with it the 4r100 4r100 automatic is a very very good automatic transmission and as we know no transmission is bulletproof but the 4r100s proved to be pretty daggone close to that. Now, the problems that they had were fluid flow, um, you know, could be different things. It could be inside the valve body, it could be uh, interior, interior fluid flow problems because of the pump assemblies inside of the 4R100. So if you see some slipping in your shifts, that's usually a good chance that you've got a fluid transfer problem even in e either in the valve body or one of the other components. Uh, torque converter is, is pretty hardy, but uh, the the transmission itself you may find one with some problems so you want to look for on your test drive you want to look for slipping in the shifts you also want to look for the overdrive light on the handle to be flashing if you see that it's either a fuse that's blown or you've got something going on the solenoid pack inside of your valve body so something to be aware of if you do test drive uh, but other than that 4R100 good transmission drive line and everything through it nothing jumps out it's, as a, a, a high failure rate you join or anything like that uh, but that's pretty well what you're getting as far as the drive line on the ford trucks goes let's talk about the 73 engine in the super duty platform there's a lot to talk about here so i'm going to try to give you as much information as i possibly can to just to make you a, a more in, informed consumer when you go to buy one of these trucks now first off and, and i should have said this in in the other section of this video these trucks are creeping up on 20 years old and some of the platforms are over 20 years old in, 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 some, of the, in some of the years, obviously. Um, there's gonna be problems. High mileage on a lot of these vehicles. This is especially uh, something to, to be aware of when it comes to the 7.3 liter engine. Although this engine, and I'll use the word again, is as close to bulletproof as we're gonna get, it can have problems, especially that can be caused by user error. All right, so let's talk about a couple things to look for when you go to drive a 7.3 that you're looking to purchase. First thing that you wanna look for underneath of the truck is oil leaks. Oil leak on a 7.3 can be something as simple as a uh, pedestal that's leaking, or it could be the dipstick gasket at the pan that's leaking, which is which is a a, a pretty uh, a pretty involved repair, just depending on how you do it. Uh, but that could be something there. Oil leaks. That's the first thing I'm going to tell you that you want to look for. Okay, this is before you ever do your test drive. Oil leaks. Second thing that you're going to want to look for is you're going to want to look for contamination inside of the uh, inside of the coolant overflow bottle. This coolant overflow bottle, this is a clear plastic. If you have a contaminant that gets in your coolant system, be it diesel fuel or oil or something of that nature, you'll have black rings inside of the coolant bottle. It's definitely something that you wanna look for. That's gonna tell you that you got maybe an injector cup uh, that's become dislodged or a mechanical failure where you're having uh, oil that's mixing with the coolant. Uh, something of that nature. So those are two things to look for, oil leaks and the coolant bottle. Third thing that I'm gonna tell you to look for, this, and again, these three things are things I want you to do before you ever go for your first test drive. Third thing, check the oil. Checking the oil is a couple of different things. You can be look, you're looking at here. You're looking to see what the condition of the oil is, see what the previous owner, how well he took care of the truck. You want to make sure that the oil is not low. If it's low and we don't have a leak, then this truck could have an internal usage of oil which could be an which could be an oil which could be a uh, o-ring on one of your injectors which is an involved process to be able to change those the valve covers got to come off the injectors have got to come out and you re-o-ring them or it could be the engine itself processing the oil you could have a ring down or something like that that's something you won't see a whole lot of 
you'll notice that on your test drive, but checking your oil level and figuring out what the oil looks like is going to be a very, very, uh, be a very, very important thing. Now, give you just a quick run through on what a 7.3 liter is. A 7.3 in a power stroke is, uses a Huey injection system. I don't know why I was tripping on that. Huey injection system um, is, a, is a very advanced fuel injection system as compared to other light duty diesels in this time frame of what this what this engine was uh, with when this engine was produced so uh, oil injection to the oil rails in the head produces up to 3,000 psi of oil pressure to the injector in to the injectors themselves when it's time for the combustion event or the uh, or the spray of fuel inside of the cylinder uh, that oil actuation inside the, jet, the injector compresses the fuel, producing a high fuel pressure up to 21,000 PSI for combustion inside of the cylinder. So you've got two liquids creating a hydraulic actuation inside of a Huey injector. The acronym Huey stands for, uh, what is it? Hydraulic electronic unit injector, I think that's right. If I'm wrong there, somebody beat me up over it. But yeah, you got a lot of things going on in there. Uh, 7.3 injector, power stroke injector, and Adam, I don't know why we didn't bring one out. It's a pretty good, pretty good size injector. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a healthy piece of equipment. So um, just know what the system is and know going into it. Now you know, when you, you're looking at this, you know how important your oil system is in the overall running of these trucks. Now, um, year brakes, we're going to talk about uh, some rod issues that, so, so you can make an informed decision on your rods. And i got to pull my piece of paper out here because I, I I'm not going to bore you with the uh, engine brakes. You can look this up. But there was a rod issue in the 7.3s, I think starting in 2001. In 2001, uh, up to 2001, so your 99s to 2001s had forged rod in here. A forged rod in this motor has proven to take up to 600 horsepower. Uh, with correct tuning and uh, correct fueling uh, without any issues. Uh, over that, over boost, uh, you know, rock incorrect setup, you might get a bent rod. That's okay. The powdered metal rods are a completely different problem. 2001 in these trucks all the way sprinkled into the 2003 model year. They went from powdered metal rods back to forged rods, <coughs> excuse me, and then back and then back again, I think is, is the way that went. So there are serial number breaks inside of there as to when you can have the powdered metal rods. The powdered metal rods, you don't want to take these trucks over 500 horsepower because you will get a rod that literally breaks into pieces. A bent rod, you guys that have ever bent a rod in a motor, you know it's one thing. A rod that actually comes apart is a whole different ball of wax. You're looking at, at screwing up a crankshaft, doing block damage at that point. Um, okay, um, camera cut out on us there, but main thing to take away from what we were just talking about powdered metal rods bad check your engine serial numbers and see what your truck has in it before you decide if you're going to try to make power i think most of these guys are for guys that are trying to pick these vehicles up is either a first time diesel or maybe you're expanding on uh, your 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 fleet so now we're up to the point um, of visual stuff that you can check for all coolant leaks. You don't have a lot of coolant leaks with these trucks, but the upper thermostat housing here can rust out and leak a little bit of coolant. That's something to look for. That's a simple and easy fix. Um, you know, of course, this has got uh, a positive crankcase system that blows uh, PCV gases into the face of the turbo, seeing that on more of the newer trucks. So you're gonna see some oil splatter around the motor uh, from that system, or it could be you know, a leaking PCV system. So that's nothing to be, you know, don't be, get it too excited on. But now let's get down to our test drive. Let's talk about our test drive and let's talk about what we're looking for. If it's cold weather, if you're going to look at one of these and you're test driving it in cold weather, the truck needs to start well underneath of its own power without being plugged in. And this is a, a, a uh, just a normal temperature I'm talking about. If you go to test drive one of these trucks and it's 40, 50 degrees outside, that truck should start by letting the glow plug cycle. And then once the wait to start light has gone off, the truck should crank and it should start. If it does not, if you have a long crank or a no start at that time, you have a couple of different things going on. You could have electronic issue, you, or you could have electric issue, you could have bad batteries, you could have glow plug issue, or more importantly, you could have a high side oil system. 
Uh, it could be a injector that's going out or wore out on a high mileage truck, a problem inside of the high pressure oil system. Uh, it could be, you know, something simple. So if you're doing this in colder weather, this is a really, really good time to see what the overall health of your truck is, is just by starting it the first time. If it's 40 degree weather, if it starts and fires right up, we're in really, really good shape. You've got yourself a good truck, so long as it passes all your other checks. Um, blow by is something that we want to look for on high mileage trucks, wore out truck, you get ring issues, start the truck, let it come to operating temperature, take it out for a drive. On that drive, you want to look for common things. Make sure that it's got good power. Make sure it doesn't seem sluggish or doggish or anything of that nature. Make sure you don't have any overheats, uh, coolant temperature, and that oil pressure is good inside of the cab. Oil pressure is good. You bring the truck back. It's come up to operating temperature. You want to look for blow-by. So you start the truck or you run it. It's operating temperature. Let the truck continue to run. Come over here, take the oil cap off of it. You're going to have a little bit of blow by. It's going to have some smoke that comes out of there. If it'll blow the cap off the top of there, if it'll blow it off the top of there and just continue to smoke, then you you got a you got an internal high pressure oil system issue um, that you need to be aware of. You could be staring down the barrel of having to do a rebuild on one of these motors. Even though we're calling this motor pretty well bulletproof. All motors have, all the 7.3s didn't make it through their life. There's some of them that need to be rebuilt and that's all part of the game, man, when you're looking for a, looking for a used truck. So ride, you know, in your, in your test drive, you're looking for, make sure the truck makes good power, back to transmission, shifts well, uh, has good uh, high pressure oil. You want to check the oil pressure inside the truck. Very, very critical. Uh, that tells you what your, what your low pressure oil system is doing that's delivering oil to your high pressure system. And as we've talked about, your high pressure oil system is critical in uh, the running of these vehicles. So, um, you know, that's uh, the best that I can tell you as far as the driving goes. You know, there's some turbo issues with the truck. The turbos aren't the most efficient for what the 7.3 is. This is a big motor, so uh, you could have, um, you know, when you, when you see, uh, when you drive the truck, uh, you may notice some uh, turbo surge with, with these trucks. It's pretty common because of the, uh, just because of the charger's inefficiency. Uh, but you know, if it's surging all the time, it could be something else. It could be a, a, a fueling issue. It could be a torque converter issue. It could be anything like that. So I won't won't stay in that for a long, long time. But yeah, that's pretty much what you're looking for um, in a 7.3 engine when you're driving down the road. Now I'm gonna look tell you one more thing. This is kind of a, a little caveat to this. I realized as I was talking that I didn't talk about this. What you're looking for in performance to see if performance things have been done to these trucks. So we're going only talking about the 99 to 2003 trucks here. The most common performance thing that's done to a truck is to have the six position chips put on them from any of the manufacturers that are out there today. TS, Hydra, uh, what have we got out there? GDP, there was back in the day, Diablo had one, SCT still has one out there, on and on and on, there's several of these. This chip mounted to the ECM. So Adam and I are gonna take you in here and we're gonna show you what you're looking for to see if the truck has got a chip on it. Now, first thing you're gonna look for is somewhere inside of the cab, this is actually perfect, somewhere inside of the cab there should be a rotary knob. You can see that this dash has got a hole cut in it. That's where the rotary knob was at one time. To find out if the truck has got a chip on it or had a chip on it, you'll wanna go underneath of the dash to the ECM down here. The ECM, I think Adam can see that. So, that's all right. So on the ECM here, you're gonna wanna look at the back of the ECM cover, hopefully that you can see that. If it's got a wire coming out of it, that means it's got a six position chip, or you take the ECM out and look and see if there's a chip physically on the truck's computer. Now that's not necessarily a bad thing, that's a good thing. But some of you guys are looking for this and you say, I don't want a truck that's been hopped up. Well. That's one thing that you're going to want to look for to see if that's been done to your truck. If you don't want that, then know about it and uh, hopefully we've showed you. These trucks can have programmers that are in the, uh, then the computer that you would never know other than driving it and, you know, uh, crowd down on it. And if it blows a bunch of black smoke, you've either got a tuner on the truck, but if it runs good, it's probably uh, a tuner. Or if it doesn't run good, it could be a turbo issue or intercooler pipe off, whatever. You know, this is another telltale sign that the truck's had a tuner in it. So just look for oddball stuff inside the truck. This truck had this kind of a crazy little pressure box on it that they uh, tapped in on the ICP sensor. 
Uh, yeah, there you go. Um, I cannot do this without talking about cam position sensor before I close. I have to do this. Cam position sensor is one of the most common failures on these trucks as far as the engine goes. It's easy to replace, but it is a very, very common thing. If you jump in this truck and you crank on it and you don't have tack and you don't have, and you have a no start, that is a cam position sensor issue. More than likely, hopefully it's not your wiring harness, but it could be cam position sensor. So start with that. And ICP failures. We're gonna talk about that real quick, Adam, and then we're gonna close, I promise you. Just a lot of stuff here to talk about. Another good thing to do before you take out running on your truck on your 7.3 for your test drive is your ICP sensor that's right over here. These ICP sensors are known to fail. Look at that. You see that wet oil right there that's on that connector? That means that this truck has got an ICP sensor issue. It's already having oil that's coming through it and that eventually is going to give him a starting and running issue that he is going to have to address. Glad we found that. I need to tell this guy about it. Awesome. Okay, that's it. Lots to talk about the 7.3s. And I know, before we get in the comments, you guys, you all that are Ford aficionados, Ford is not my thing, is, is not my strong suit, but it's one of the first trucks that we worked on here at Third Bread Diesel back when dinosaurs roamed the earth. You had two vehicles that were out at the time that were that were that that we could actually do and do some performance things on. It was 7.3 Power Stroke, and it was a Dodge Cummins at the time. There wasn't anything you could do on the 6.5. So. Uh, that at that time, I was going to make a lot more power. Obviously, today, a lot of stuff's been done there, but still nothing. But anyway, all that being said, um, good truck. You're adding that if you're looking to add one of these to your fleet to pull a camper or something like that. Hope you watch this video. Hope it gives you some tips and hope it puts you into a better vehicle for you and possibly for you and your family. So, I'm Wade from Thoroughbred Diesel. That's a lot of talking. If you guys got any questions, please give us a call, like and subscribe to our channel, jump down in the comments, talk to us about your super duty, tell other people what you know about them and see what you can do to help your fellow man and find himself a 7-3. Thank you for watching.